As civil war continues in Somalia, many refugees are fleeing to the United States and other countries. Quite a few Somalians have resettled in Kansas, mainly working in meatpacking facilities. This video features Mohammed Abdurrahan, whose job is to assist refugees and their respective adoptive communities in making the transition into life in the United States as smooth as possible. Somalis are divided into clans and sub-clans uh, or tribes and sub-tribes um, and that is the reason that we have the war uh, because of these uh, uh, different clans fighting each other um, each one of them trying to uh, uh, control the country or, uh, or be the government or uh, align with another clan so that's why we have the war in Somalia. Otherwise, Somalia is one of the most homogeneous countries in the world. Uh, all our Somalis are the same ethnicity, same language, same religion. Somalis are Muslims, Sunni Muslims. A lot of them know how to read the Quran. Uh, they can read the Quran, they can um, uh, recite it, but uh, a lot of them do not speak or write Arabic. Uh, so even though they can read the Quran, which is written in Arabic language, uh, they cannot uh, 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 speak or, or, or uh, write Arabic language. Families are headed by uh, a male figure, usually. Uh, even though now, increasingly, we see households that are headed by, uh, you know, uh, females, uh, because either the male, uh, the father of the family is killed or uh, in a war, or, uh, you know, the mother is a single mother. Uh, so increasingly we see that, uh, but usually it's headed by uh, the, uh, a male figure in the family. Um, also, another uh, thing that we are uh, uh, um, different is children are expected to take care of the, the family and, and their parents when they grow up. Even when they're young, especially the girls, are expected to to be part of, uh, of, the, of the family and do the house chores and uh, uh, be with the mom. Uh, so, but when, as soon as the children grow up and make, and they make their own income, instead of being separate, they a lot of times live with their parents and support the parents. These children went through a lot of trauma, uh, fled the country, um, came to the United States, during flight from Somalia to refugee countries, to refugee camps, um, they have seen killings, they have seen rapes, they have, been seen, they have seen torture. Maybe they might have been tortured themselves or raped or, or did something bad to them. Uh, so that trauma is still there. Uh, refugee camps are not <coughs> the best place, really. There is a violence at night, there is a difficulty, there is a shortage of everything. There were no proper schools there too. So uh, these children come with a lot of baggage, uh, a lot of, you know, difficult life. Now, nobody diagnoses um, in the refugee camps, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, illnesses like post-traumatic st stress disorder or PTSD or uh, autism or, uh, you know, uh, ADHD or things like that. So these children probably might have those, but have never been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. They came in the United States, suddenly they are in a school. So those things should be paid attention. Another issue that, that increasingly we see is uh, children that are uh, I, not their own age. Uh, they come here, they probably is 14, but his is, uh, is, is, uh, documents say he's seven years old. Uh, uh, particularly in Somalia, date of birth are not really celebrated, and a lot of families don't know the date of birth. Uh, they know the child is 13 or 12 or 14, but they don't know. Therefore, a lot of times there is a confusion. And children come here and end up in a, <coughs> a class that are not their age. Uh, for example, a 14-year-old might end up in a uh, fifth grade or something like that. Uh, so those things should be also observed. Another issue is that, uh, uh, that children, when they come here, uh, the teachers should uh, observe is uh, malnutrition. 
really. A lot, the refugee camps were not the best place to have nutrition. So when they come here, children really are malnourished, a lot of them. Uh, uh, therefore, that might affect their development and their thinking and their uh, uh, catching up with the homework. So that things also should be uh, looked at. School structure in, in Somalia is totally different here than, than here. Uh, there is a strict discipline in, 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 in Somalia. And physical uh, discipline is, is, you know, normal. The liberty in the classroom here uh, is different from, uh, you know, back in Somalia. Uh, students, uh, children could not just walk out of the class or move inside the class. The teacher has to give you permission. Uh, so a lot of times these things affect the children when they come here. Uh, as I said, these children went through a lot of chaos in their lives and a lot of uh, uh, war. And a lot of times research shows that the, the, uh, the, the lax rules of the classes here, or, or, or uh, so they equate that to the chaos back home and then affects them. And a lot of children they interviewed, researchers interviewed, uh, said that I feel that the class is out of control. You know, uh, a lot of Somali children said that the class is out of control, there's no discipline. Uh, so uh, they prefer the strict rules. So I would suggest that teachers uh, uh, here uh, in Kansas and in the U.S., when they want to interact or uh, uh, communicate with the parents, there sh should be personal communication. Uh, either the parents should be called to school or somebody should be sent to their home to talk to the parent. Uh, with the help of an interpreter. A lot of the parents do not speak English. Uh, therefore, uh, might, not, uh, might know there is a problem with, a, with their child, but hesitate to go to school because they cannot communicate with the teacher. But if they know that there is an interpreter at the school or the teachers have access to an interpreter, uh, it's highly likely that they will go to school and talk to the teacher and say, well, I feel my son is not doing well or my daughter is not doing well. Uh, how can you help him? Uh, likewise, the teachers, if they see uh, that uh, the children, refugee children or Somali children, are not performing well in school, I would highly recommend that uh, parents be called uh, uh, personally to school and talk to. I know for a fact Somalis value education. Uh, and they really want their children to go to school and value education. Uh, uh, so, and children are actually, a lot of times you will hear parents saying that, well, do you have any other job than to go to school? Uh, that's your job and I want you to be on top of your job. Uh, but if the parents do not know, then children really fall behind. Most of the most difficult um, uh, things for Somalis when they come here, number one, like many, many nationalities, is the language. Uh, that's the most challenging. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, second most challenging is really uh, uh, the, uh, the weather, like, you know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, uh, even though most Somalis live in Minnesota, which is one of the coldest places in the United States. Uh, but a lot of, especially the elder one, elder people, uh, you know, feel that, that it's really affecting their health. Um, third, third uh, thing that we see quite often is um, um, nutrition. Uh, a lot of times uh, food is abundant here. Uh, there is lack of uh, education on, you know, uh, the health uh, food or uh, choice of food. Therefore, uh, nutrition is another uh, issue. Uh, the, the, again, another one that's uh, a bigger challenge is not knowing the rules. Uh, you know, here a lot of times people think that refugees or Somalis ignore the rules. Uh, they do not. S simply, they don't know the rules. In the state of Kansas, most Somalis work either in the meat packing plants or what what's called entry level jobs, uh, you know, other factories or restaurants or uh, housekeeping uh, in hotels. Uh, so those are, but a majority of the Somalis, especially in Southwest Kansas, uh, in Dodge City and Garden City and Liberal, uh, they work on meatpacking plants. Uh, and those meatpacking plants really 
uh, their wages are higher than you know fast food restaurants and stuff like that. But the the work is harder, really. Uh, it's really physically demanding job, and but uh, a lot of them work there now almost three years, four years, five years, uh, and some of them move their families there. When children they come in this country, they learn the language fast. Uh, they go to school, but the parents are at home. Uh, some of them do not go to English class or might go, uh, you know, a few times a week to English class. So parents depend on uh, on the children, uh, and then uh, roles reverse. Now the parents have to wait the children to come from school in order to go to the to the grocery store to buy sugar because they don't know how to say sugar or where to find it or you know. Uh, or they think they might get lost, you know. So it's it's really uh, difficult for both the children and the parent. Now the parents feel that they lost control. Now all of a sudden they they uh, uh, you know they have to depend on their children, uh, their 12 year old or 13 year old, to come from school so that they can go to to the grocery store and get get things uh, from the store. Children are feeling burdened because now they come from school, they're tired, they have homework. Uh, instead of sitting, doing their home and uh, homework and being uh, you know, a child, now all of a sudden they have to take the parents to, uh, uh, to the laundromat because they don't know how to put the coins in the laundromat. The best part about being in the United States, and, and a lot of Somalis will tell you this, is the freedom. Uh, to come here and be free, free to work, free to live their own lives, uh, free to raise their children the way they want, uh, without any interference or or worry from anything. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the the rule of law. Uh, a lot of times there were there was there was chaos uh, in Somalia, uh, in the refugee camps. Uh, there were no raw law really. Uh, here, there's a rule of law, and uh, people know their, boundary, their boundaries, and uh, so that's that's really very very important. Thing. Another one is the safety uh, uh, that people appreciate. You know, not you know we share with everybody the the general concern of maybe uh, uh, gangs in the neighborhood or something like that, but there is no uh, all-out war or you know, like the refugee camps, killings, uh, killings at night. Uh, so those things uh, make them appreciate that they're here. Uh, I want to contribute to the society, really. In fact, all of them uh, looking forward to becoming United States citizens. Uh, so they, they can, you know, be able to have a passport and travel and enjoy life and be part of the American dream.